While you're standing in the book of Romans, and let me also be saying that I would never be bought out by any politician. And if you saw cops to the interacting with the black community making a positive change on yesterday, you saw that I'm willing to challenge my friends and DB for the people. Because somebody got to stand and be a voice for the people. That's why I like this. I love this series, Redemption, because it really, this series, Redemption, has really clarified my stance that I love people who messed up because God uses those kind of people in a great way. Can you just give God praise for saving you on the day? You stand in the book of Romans chapter 5. I'll get there in a second, but let me bring you up to speed. I want you to stand out like the way you look when you're standing in it. It's powerful. This term redemption simply means the act of being saved from sin, error, or evil. Now, if God has saved you from sin, error, evil, one of the three, two of the three, all three, I'm going to give God some praise. And I told you, I, I'm so grateful. He saved me from all three of them. And, and, and my, he got to save me daily from them. I, I might mess up any day. But thank God for redemption. Thank God for grace. Thank, thank God for his mercy. So I don't have to stand on my own power. I can stand in God's grace. This series began, for those who are refreshed, this series began with the redemption of Paul. Paul had to overcome his OG days, his gangster days as Saul. And then we looked at the redemption of the prodigal son. Many of us can relate to the prodigal son story because we grew up the right way, but then we went and did the wrong thing and to come back to the father's house. So we give God praise for the redemption of the prodigal son. Then on last week, we were blessed with redemption of Peter, as Peter finally overcame the Simon inside of him. I'm transparent. I, I'm what you call a free Negro, so I can tell you that I'm so glad that I finally got to a point where that inner me, that old me, that I'm now bigger and stronger than that old me, and I can relate to the Simon Peter struggle. But I can also relate to redemption of God where the Simon is now canceled and the Peter shines bright. Give God praise that you've overcome the old you. And don't worry you. If you say, I'm not there yet, that's a good place to be in. Because you're in the right place. And today, y'all, I'm going to really mess you church folks up. Because today, we're going to talk about the redemption of a prostitute. The redemption of a prostitute. Yes, a prostitute can be redeemed. Born again, saved, sanctified, and greatly used by God. Now, now I know, keep standing. I know some of you holding me out, church folks, have already tuned me out. But there's no way I can relate to the prostitute story. I felt Peter. I felt the prodigal son. I felt Paul. But I, said, I don't. I, I can't relate to no prostitute story. But, but, but let me, let me before we go to the text, let me just make sure everybody understand. We're going to keep it real. Oh, okay. Let me talk to the sisters real quick. Here. And I'm not going to go too far because we don't have children's church yet. Second Sunday, November, children's church, church stores. I thank God for a children's church. So I'm going to make it real simple. Sister, if you've ever exchanged your time or talent for a treasure, brother, if you if you ever purchased anything for her time or treasure, if you met her in church, the club, or at work, and you exchanged something for her time or treasure, you know the game. So, so now we clear. Now we clear. So, so now we clear. Now we clear. So let's go to the text. <laughs> Romans chapter five. Yeah. Verse number eight. Remain standing for the word of God and for your clarity. I'm going to read it from three different versions because I'm going to interject something inside of you that will probably stop you from being self-righteous, holier than thou, and on the wrong track of God. 
Can I say it again? Because if you are finger pointing judgmental and stopping folks from being saved and being born again, you're on the wrong side of God. Wow. On the wrong side. Romans chapter 5 in the NIV. Hey, she with me? Thank you. Oh, I love the media team. They just flow with this crazy preacher. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the NIV. But, you know, but cancels everything else. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not when we got it together. He died for us while we were still sinners. I don't care what them church folks tell you. Christ died before we were still sinners. Not when we got it together. The Amplified Bible breaks it down. He says, but, that's an old story. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I still see why we were still sinners. He didn't wait for us to get it right, for him to do right by us. He did right by us while we were still getting it wrong. Let me leave you with this one. The Message Bible, it, it will erase any doubt you have. The Message Bible, Romans 5 and 8. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. Right. Help me, help me. Jesus. And even, watch this, for, for you holding down folks, and even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. Yeah. We can understand someone dying for a person we're dying for. We can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfish sacrifice. But look at this thing. That's his Bible. But God put his own love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were no use whatsoever to him. Take your seat. While we were no use whatsoever to him. He didn't care about your seeing, about your preaching, about your digging. While we were still of no use to God, he sent his son Jesus for you and I. So it's clear, the heart of God leans toward the loss and the assignment of the church is to win souls and disciple the loss through the word of God. Now watch this, our traditions, our religious denominations, and our self-centered attitudes have taken us off our kingdom assignment of soul winning. But when's the last time you heard the church talk about winning souls? And we talk about church membership, church growth numerically, but when did the church stop being in the business of soul winning? We're campaigning now to fill pews, but not change hearts. We're so concerned about transferring someone from church ABC to GHIC, but how many of us are dedicated, committed to the discipleship process of taking someone that's down and out, messed up from the floor up, and demonstrating the love of God and discipling them through the word of God, not through your thoughts, not through what you think they should be, but through the word of God and transform them from what they used to be to what God desires for them to be. All right. You thought I was worried.